so here we are. It is 2020. It's been a crazy year, and it's also been a crazy year for cameras, to say the least. We got Canon R5, we got Canon R6, we got the Black Magic, and now Sony has put it all out on the table, and we're finally seeing what the A7S 3 holds, and it is a pretty exciting camera. I'm talking the specs are out there, you've probably seen them, but it's got 4K every tank pretty much, which is pretty awesome. It's time to decide, it's time to get it all out there, which camera to buy, which one are you gonna to commit to, and what, what am I personally gonna invest in? Before we get into any of that, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, go for it, um, and follow me on this awesome journey of YouTube. I upload every week fun videos, and I'm actually doing a video next week on this lighting setup I've got going. It's actually a tube lighting. It's full RGB, check this out. Ooh. But here we are, uh, 2020, like I've said, Sony a7S III released. Um, like most people, I stayed up late because I live in Australia um, to watch this live stream and I can safely say it wasn't worth my time. The marketing team from Sony, you need help, quite frankly. I think a lot of camera companies need help when it comes to it. It's quite funny that these camera companies that exist on making good images and tools for us to use inherently suck really badly at making good promos and use of them. I found them with so many cameras. I think the last time I saw a good camera promo was when the original C300 from Canon came out and I got Vincent to make this awesome video. If I find it, I'll link it below. Canon R5, uh, I will say the Canon, they did put the CEOs and the people that made this stuff in front of the camera and they also did give it to Peter McKinnon and the ambassadors to actually make pretty cool content. Actually, the, some of the shots they got with the R6 were really awesome as well and the film that Peter McKinnon got was so sick. And then what Sony did was so boring. I actually fell asleep on the couch and I didn't also know they just gave the camera to like every YouTuber for like a day to just run around and film pretty average shots and try and figure out all they can with in a short amount of time, which is a really weird concept. Um, it's better just to give the camera like they did to Peter McKinnon for a bit and like just like Canon did and just get someone invested into your product to make something good out of it. Not what there was, which was like, Essentially, if you go watch it again, it's a glorified slideshow with what seems to be some guy that's pretty handy with the camera ran around Japan for a day. And then that was their release video. Um, so it was pretty funny, pretty shameful. I wish everyone just took a note from Apple's book when they did their keynote or live stream because that was awesome. And I think camera companies really need to step their game up and Sony for releasing such a cool camera, you did a really terrible job. Um, but it's all gonna sell like crazy and it speaks for itself really. But it was boring, um, but that's not what it's about. It's not about that, it's about the camera. 4K everything, um, 10 bit, it's awesome, it's so good. It's got a flip out screen now, which like nearly every camera's had forever. So, um, you, you know what, it got me thinking, this Sony camera is kind of just essentially a really good camera if it came out in 2018. It had the flip out screen, it has better battery life, it has all these awesome 4K specs which we love and want, giving us a quality of like a cinema camera, really giving us real use out of this S-Log3, which before that was terrible to use. But instead they released it in 2020. And in 2020, we're getting these crazy companies now trying to innovate on each other, push it forward, and we've got Sony doubling down on essentially just all the things they couldn't get right before. They gave us S-Log3 really early in every camera, which was useless because we didn't have 10-bit, but now we have 10-bit. So yes, I see the pros in this camera, and definitely if you're a wedding cinematographer or something like that, there's some very big pros in it. But I, I just don't know what Sony's vision for the future is. Maybe it's just cameras that don't catch on fire. <laughs> I don't know, um, but I, I don't know, because I personally am a Sony shooter back in the day. I've been all Canon, and then I did the thing that everyone hates to do, and I switched completely over to Sony in 2015 to the a7R2, and it didn't go too well. Loved the camera, did some great content with it, but just didn't love the battery life, how I was using it, the overheating issues it had. The, the color science was terrible at the time. Just all these things would go wrong, and I couldn't deal with it, so then I went back to Canon, invested in it, got a C100, C200, 90D now, got all these lenses and everything, and it's been awesome and terrific time, and I've loved it, and it's really quick turnarounds, it's good quality, and Canon has, that are really robust all around. And since entering mirrorless in such a shorter time than Sony has, they've, they've created so much more. And just that, that striving for pushing for more gets me excited. But it's not about that, it's about the Sony. And you can't deny that what Sony has been able to do is quite frankly what Canon couldn't do. <laughs> um, and that's just the truth um, there. But some things, just like the flip out screen, like every camera has a flip out screen and Sony's just put it in, you know, and like people are pumped about it, but then even their screen gets in the way of your port. So you can't actually plug a mic in and rotate your screen on the, 
on the fly, which is quite funny because it's in the way. You, you have to already choose the angle you want your screen at, which it's a bit of a lull. Um, but hey, it's their first screen. They're there now. But I guess this comes down to really why, what, what am I going to do? The cameras out there are five, Blackmagic, who knows, maybe Sony a7S III, a really solid camera. What am I personally going to do? And I can tell you right now, I've made the decision to go with the R6. <gasps> what? Yep, that's it. I'm going with the R6. And the reasoning being is I get cold in winter and I like the thought of my camera like being a nice warm, warm, you know, heating me up. And I really think that feature missing from the Sony S3 is the biggest letdown. Who wants to go filming in the cold and not have a personal heater as long as a camera? The marketing team in Canon have got it all wrong. It's not 20 minutes and the camera stops recording. It's in 20 minutes, you have a personal hot water bottle. The amount of times my wife goes, Josh, I need the hot water bottle. <laughs> no more. Hey babe, hold the camera for a couple of minutes. Genius. So real big miss on Sony's part, not getting that. And Canon marketing team, hit me up if you want me to really market this camera. So keen for that feature. But all seriousness, features that I love is the IBIS looks incredible. The test online, it has just been like dominating IBIS right now, which is insane. The, the, the images is that awesome Canon image, which I love. And this is a B camera to my C200, which I do own, which is still my main camera, which can still do 12 bit, 4K RAW internally, which is better than the Sony already. So it, none of these cameras, except for the Canon 8K, but it can't do S-Log2, which is 15 stops of diameter greater. So currently, basically, I'm saying I personally already own the best camera image out of all of these cameras. So I'm not looking to get better uh, because none of these can. So I'm looking to complement this for a B angle. So the, the handheld and the IBIS looks awesome. The awesome new autofocus in it looks awesome. Uh, the fact that it's good in low light is a good thing for Canon. And once again, I do own a lot of Canon stuff. So I still have all my Sony stuff and adapters. I only sold the cameras. I kept a lot of the stuff in case I ever had to switch again. But Sony was this close of getting me to switch. But um, I honestly think, don't shoot me down. It's, it didn't excite me enough because like I said, the A7S III, a great camera in 2018, a good camera in 2020. It, it would have blown the socks off. But if you have to wait five years for intervals, other camera companies are already pushing 12K, already pushing 8K raw internally. If they're pushing this, are you willing to wait five more years for this camera company to finally update this? Are you willing to stick, like this is it? Like, I just don't know. Like Canon's probably gonna release something newer just around the corner. There's a new rumored mini cinema camera coming out soon, which is cool. I'm just keen with what Canon's doing with their RF mount, which looks insane. So yes, I've ordered the R6 already, pre-ordered along with some RF lenses, some mounts, got a free battery thrown in, that was cool. I'm excited for it, I really am, and the specs that it has and everything is exactly what I need. I don't film anything over really 30 minutes ever, and if I do, it's usually super long, and I'm not gonna film it in 4K. Um, don't shoot me, I'm gonna put, if I want a close shot, I'll probably put a, my a 70 to 200 on it, get the tight angle. I don't know, multi-camming, massive file sizes do not excite me and do not excite my MacBook over here. Like, so <laughs> really, bigger file sizes are a blessing and a curse. So if you can deal with it, you can. But for me, it's like, I've got so many quick turnarounds, I'm trying to get out half the time. So personally, for my shooting, the R6 is the best choice. Don't really need the R5, because I'm not a photographer. And that's the one weird thing, before before we wrap this all up, the one weird thing I can't get my hand around Sony is if this camera is not for stills. As much as they try and trick you and tell you it's a great low light camera in for stills, it's a, it's not a professional stills camera. It's, it's just not. And I, I don't understand why then it has to be in a stills body. Like I don't. They, they, could, they could change the ergonomics of it, they could change the whole layout of it, but they keep making it look identical to a stills camera. Maybe some people like that, maybe some people don't. I personally don't like the idea of that because it's not a stills camera and you're still gonna get people when you're shooting video going, oh, can you take a photo of me? And you psych, your photo won't look good because it's only 12 megapixels, even though it is, it'll still, it'll look better than an iPhone. Yeah, it'll definitely look all right, but you know what I mean. Nobody wants to be called a photographer 
when you're videoing. I think it's the number one thing you get called when you hold those cameras. But anywho, that's my decision. Pumped to get the R6. Let me know in the comments what camera you're gonna get if you think I'm crazy, if you think I'm dumb. But if you think the camera's just gonna catch on fire as soon as I get it, if it does, I'll film it. Um, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be awesome. But remember, please subscribe, um, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.